on average, mm -hmm. if I come see you tomorrow, how long does it take to fix my credit? Like, what should I be bracing myself for? Or is there an average? So I would say normal to be safe, just because obviously, you know, we don't promise anything. That's one of the things that we don't do. We don't promise our clients like, hey, one month, two months. To be on the safe side, we tell them, look, six to nine months, because it's kind of like I revert everything to personal training because um, my best friend is a personal trainer. It's very funny how similar credit repair and personal training actually are, are very similar. So when, when you go to a personal trainer and you want to change your lifestyle and change your eating, it's not going to take a month. It's not going to take two months. It might take five to six months to start working out, drinking water, eating right. And then you, cause you might see results in a month and then month two, you go back to your old ways. So same thing with credit repair. You have to brace yourself where, all right, I have to be strict. I have to make sure I don't overspend on anything that, you know, if, all right, if I'm buying Jordans all the time, let me stop doing that. If I'm eating out all the time, I got to stop. If I'm always on Fashion Nova, if I'm always going to the mall, if I'm always on DoorDash, I got to stop. And that then saves up some money because during credit repair, you are going to have to pay off some debt. You know, not everything gets wiped out. So if you have a credit card from four years ago and we're not able to delete it, we're like, hey, listen, there's a $500 credit card. Let's see if we can settle for $350. Well, if you've been tightening up your spending the last couple months, now that $350 is not going to be a problem. And now you're, in a sense, you're paying off debt, but you're investing in your credit score. A lot of people don't realize a credit score is an investment, not credit repair, not credit. Your credit score you're investing in. So a lot of people look at the stock market, they see the numbers go up and down. That's all that they care about, the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. The credit score is the same thing. It's a number that you invest in either by discipline with, with making sure you're on time and, and low utilization, but then also paying down debt that can't be deleted because even if we delete, let's say we delete everything from your credit report, right? Completely, everything is deleted. We wipe your clean, clean slate. Now you have no credit. You have to now apply for maybe a secure credit card, a credit bill to loan, and that's going to take money. You know, you, a secure credit card is $200 right there. A My Jewelers Club, which we recommend to clients, is a $5,000 account. That's another $200 right there. So you have to be ready mentally and also spending-wise. You got to cut a lot of stuff out. You know what I mean? When I first started fixing my own credit, I had to stop doing a lot of stuff because I had to pay some stuff off, get some things settled, and then also invest in credit cards and stuff like that. So six to nine months, I would say, is a very, very good sweet spot to be able to help you with educating you and transforming yourself. So that way, if I fix your credit in three months, I don't want to see you seven months down the road. I want to, I want to in a year, I want you to tell me, hey, man, through your program, I was able to help three of my cousins out. They got their credit cards. Now they got 750 and we're all going to buy some investment property together. You know what I mean? So that's why it does take a little bit longer with our program. Okay, you keep using credit report, credit score. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? So your credit score is driven by your credit report. So you have a credit report and you have data that's on your credit report. So you have your name, you have your address, you have uh, employment history. That doesn't affect your credit score, but it's how they identify your credit report, right? Now you have... Your credit card loan, your credit cards that you've paid or haven't paid, collection accounts, you have your mortgage, your auto loans, student loans. That's all reported by the companies that you have an agreement with. And they now report all that data to the credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Now you have a fight, you have FICO. FICO now has an algorithm that calculates the data on your credit report and now comes up with the credit score. So if you have late payments, which is negative data, you have collections, that's gonna drive a low credit score. If you have good data, which is low utilization, on-time payments, not a lot of inquiries, that's gonna drive a higher credit score. And what's crazy is a credit score is a three-digit number, right? FICO score, you have a Fannish score, you have a couple different credit scores out there, but it's all an indication of what the, light, what the risk is and what the predictability is of you being 90 days late or more. Uh, I mean, you being late within the next 90 days. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
it, it's like a risk, you know, with insurance you have like, you know, and people like assess you like, Oh, you're, you know, we can't insure you because you're too much of a risk. Well, the credit score is really just the risk of how likely you are to be late in the future. You know what I mean? So it's kind of broken down a little bit, like at the five categories. So it, it, it is a little bit tricky um, to just make sure that if you have good data, you're going to have a good credit score. Got you. You mentioned FICO. Mm -hmm. What is FICO in layman terms? And also, if I got this correct, they just came out with FICO 10 or FICO 10T. What exactly is that amendment? Yep. So you have Fair Isaac Corporation. That's the that's the pretty much what FICO stands for. It's pretty much a company, um, you know, started by two guys, and it's it's pretty much the people that control or or, or own the monopoly on credit scores, right? So FICO. Hold hold hold, hold on. Yeah. I, I I've been hearing about FICO my whole life. It seems like. Yep. FICO is privately owned? This is not government owned? No, it's private owned. Holy smoke. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. That, yep. You, you just educated me because I thought that this was something that the federal government had yeah. in place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's owned by two guys. They started it and it's not really um, like you and me right now can say, you know what? I want to come up with a credit score too. And as long as the banks appeal to it, they'll start using it. You know what I mean? Because if, if it makes sense to them to, to predict risk, then, then they'll use it. So FICO, there's a lot of models out there. There's, there's FICO 2, FICO 4, and FICO 5, which is currently being used by the mortgage industry. So that's why, Sean, when you see Credit Karma score, mm -hmm. it's a lot different from your mortgage score or what other lenders see is because it's all different algorithms, all different models. So the fight, so... Think about it. You just mentioned FICO 10 and FICO 10T. Mortgage companies are still using FICO 2, 4, and 5. <laughs> so it's like they're not changing that. That's like a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac thing where the mortgage companies are still going to be using FICO 2, 4, and 5. Um, there's FICO 8, FICO 9, and there's FICO 10, as you mentioned. Um, FICO 10T stands for trending data. So what FICO 10T is, is it also takes into account of how your past spending was. So one of the things that myself included uh, would tell people is, that, hey, right when you're getting ready to buy a house, just pay your credit card debt down, your score will shoot right back up, and you'll be good. But they're going to eventually incorporate FICO 10T into some scoring models where they're going to say, um, yeah, your FICO 10T score is low because all that you did was just, you've had maxed out credit cards for two years, and you just paid them right now to get this mortgage that's still a risk to us because we might think that you might get this mortgage or get this, this, this product and then max your credit cards out again. So that's what the 10T stands for, is for trending data. Got you. You mentioned Credit Karma. Let's talk about that. Yep. When I was growing up, we were always taught, don't, you know, you don't want any inquiries, even yourself. I think at the time you get to make one inquiry per year to check on your credit score and see what's happening there. With Credit Karma, they push the fact that it doesn't affect your credit score. Is that accurate? No. So let me rephrase that. You checking your own credit with Credit Karma doesn't affect. That is correct. That is correct. Checking your own credit with Credit Karma or annualcreditreport.com or any credit monitoring company that you got to pay a subscription to, will not affect your credit. And I actually advocate for people to pay a subscription to monitor their credit versus Credit Karma, because Credit Karma is free, you get what you pay for. But before I mentioned there's Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, right? Yep. Credit Karma does not monitor Experian. So you're missing one of the credit reports, which Experian is a pretty, it's a pretty big deal. You know, Experian is one of the big credit reports. You know, American Express checks them when they approve people, Chase. And when you go for a mortgage, they check all three. They don't check two. So if you're just monitoring your credit with Credit Karma, you, you might be missing something that's negative on there or not reporting at all that can cause issues down the road. Got you. So just for my clarity, mm -hmm. Credit Karma, you get what you pay for, but... If I look at my own credit, it is not negatively affecting my credit score. Correct.
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.